Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be about what parts are we going to put in the Bullet 2 JZ. So this motor is going to be supporting 2500 horsepower. Um, so we try to get all the parts that can withstand all that power. Uh, there's the block, rods, pistons, uh, that's the pan, crank, oil supply. Uh, and we're going to go over that one by one. I'm going to show you all the parts. Okay. All right. So let's go over all the parts. Uh, we can start from, let's see here. So we got the hey. block over there. We got the crank. We got the oil pump. We got the uh, bolts, bearings, the front cover, the pan, pistons, and the rods. And that's the beautiful block we got yesterday. Uh, if you want to see a full video about the block, we did everything uh, yesterday. So there's uh, another video about that. But today, the video is about the internals. So what internals do you need to make a 2500 horsepower 2JZ? So we got uh, BME rods. Let's fix the camera here. Beautiful rods. Can you see? Okay, so alloy rod. Um, pretty much the strongest rod uh, for a 2J as far as I was told. It's got a little dowel there to hold the bearing. And it's got oiling on the small end. Beautiful rod made by BME. So we got those. What else? We got bearings. These are uh, bearings with extra clearance. You have, uh, this is the HX. That means they have a little bit extra clearance. There you go. Thank you, Hayden. Put mm -hmm. it back. Right here? Yeah, that's good. Okay. So those are the uh, rod bearings made by BME. All right, what next? What's next, Hayden? Uh, pistons? Sure. Pistons. Thank you, Induction Performance, for sending these beautiful pistons. Uh, let me see the phone. So, what are you doing? I gotta see if the video is right. Okay. So these pistons are custom pistons <laughs> by Diamond. Um, as you can see here, the specs, they're stock bore, stock stroke. Uh, they have 10 and a half to one compression ratio. That's why I have a little bit of a dome. Beautiful pistons. Induction performance logo, lateral, gas ports. All right. The, uh, the compression height, which is the distance between the center of the pin to the top of the deck is a little lower on, on these pistons. So the pin is pushed up a little bit and the rod, I'll show you in a, the rod is a little bit longer. So it's still a stock stroke and uh, it's a longer rod with the pin a little higher. Um, we do that so uh, the, the rod has less, needs less clearance in the block. Anyway, that's, that's the setup that I was recommended. But yeah, beautiful pistons by Diamond. Put these back. These are, these go here because the, the pin is right in the way of the oil, what do you call it, uh, the oil, the oil, I can't remember what it's called, but the, the oil seal, let's take it out again. The pin is right in the way of the oil seal, so you have to have these here to support the oil pin. Oil seal, sorry. 
they also sent <laughs> trend piston pins, DLC coated. And uh, these pins are slightly longer than stock. So the stock length of the pin is 2.25 inches. This one is 2.5 inches. So it's a little, little longer. So there's more support on the pin. It's a little heavier, but when you're going for high power like this, you want a little longer pin. I'm gonna put it back. Thank you. All right. What else we got here? Uh, total seal rings. Comes with all the rings. Compression rings. Beautiful. Thank you again to Induction Performance for all these. Very big supporter of, uh, of this build. They helped us out with the pistons. Thank you very much. Okay, put that back here, honey. Okay. It's okay. There we go. All right, so that's the pistons and pins from Diamond. Next, we got... The uh, Magnus Motorsports billet pan for the dry sump. Uh, beautiful piece, two pieces. Uh, very light, very strong. Light? Yeah, it's pretty light, yeah. So basically now we're running uh, a dry sump setup, even last year. So all the oil that goes down, there's no oil accumulating in the pan. Well, there's no oil stored in the pan. The oil is stored in a, in a tank uh, in the engine bay. So whenever it goes through the engine, it goes down this pan and then you have these drain plugs here where the uh, the pump is sucking oil from. This recess here is for, uh, there's, a, there's a drain here that goes right on the corner. So that's for that. But very nice piece from Magnus Motorsports. I mean, wow, look at, look at the machine work on this. It's crazy. Very nice. This is also from Magnus. This is the front cover light, right? Mm. So this is where the uh, tensioner goes. Um, yeah, so this is cut here because of the motor plate, but uh, beautiful piece from Magnus. Look at that. Very nice. This is where the crank sensor goes. Thank you, Marco, for this beautiful piece. Uh, next up is Brian Crower Billet Crank. This is a... Dad? <sighs> yes, honey. This is a little bit more heavy. It is, yes. So Billet Crank by Brian Crower. Uh, you got a Honda journal, so it's a smaller journal than a 2JZ. It's a stock stroke, so 86 millimeter stroke. Uh, it's a lightweight version. Very nice. I don't know if you can see. <sighs> you can do that next. So it's got direct oiling. You can see here that the oiling is direct to the center of the crank. Lightweight, it's got these lightened pieces here. This is for balancing here. So big thanks to Brian Crower for uh, supplying the crank. Next up, uh, oil. Oh no. Just, just a little bit like that so they can see. You can see in there. So this is a Peterson five stage oil pump. So this is for the dry sump. So it sucks oil from the bottom. So all these scavenges here, they go to the pump. Okay. Okay. Um, all the scavenges from the oil, they go to the pump. And then there's one out that goes back to the tank. But uh, look at this thing. I don't know if you can see. So that's the oil supply. Uh, these are the main bearings. These go on the crank over here. Uh, the block here. These are for the studs. These are massive. 
Let's go over here. So half inch head studs, typically I believe the 2J is a 7 16 head stud, so these are upgraded to a half inch. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the bottom end parts. So it goes to the machine shop on Monday. Um, he's gonna have to clean the block out, make sure the rings are good, make sure the, the piston, there's our, everything's all the right sizes. So, yeah, we need to make sure there's four thou of piston to wall clearance. What thou? See how close it is? What's thou? Uh, thou is one thousandth of an inch. What happens if you drop it through? It's gonna fall, we're not gonna drop it. Wait, what happens if you drop it? Yeah. Daddy, what happens if you let go? I won't let go. Why would I do that? Yeah. It dropped down. I don't even drop down. Yep. So that's it for the bottom end. He's going to have to take these plugs out, clean it, put the crank in, uh, make sure all the clearances are good. Uh, the main clearances on a billet block have to be a little tighter than a... The... Uh, we want about uh, two thou of clearance on the bearings because aluminum expands a lot more. So you don't want to run it loose. You want to make sure you run it a little tighter. But uh, yeah, so he's going to have to take this out, put the uh, put the crank in, put the bearings in, and uh, check the clearances. But yeah, I think we're going to, we have everything for TX2K. Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe and follow us if you want to see more about this build. Uh, the next video is probably going to be uh, the bottom end being assembled at uh, Competition Automotive. So uh, hit that subscribe and uh, follow us for more. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye, Hayden.